Since 2014, the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine has been the most hotly debated issue in Eastern Europe. And in 2018, this issue got even more complex as a new religious layer was added on top. That year, the Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople, Bartholomew I, recognized the creation of a Ukrainian Orthodox Church, which would be independent from the Russian Orthodox Church. In response, the Russian Patriarch, Kirill of Moscow, unilaterally severed his ties with the Church of Constantinople. This event, known as the 2018 Moscow-Constantinople Schism, is not often discussed but presents a significant issue which will certainly impact the politics of Eastern Europe. To really understand what happened, why it happened and what impact it will have on the political stage, we first need to explore the rather confusing structure and history of the Orthodox Church. I will simplify many events and concepts, so please keep that in mind. First of all, what is the Orthodox Church? In short, it is the world's third largest Christian denomination with about 250 million adherents, mostly concentrated in Eastern Europe. However, the Orthodox Church is not simply a single centralized church, but rather a collection of independent and semi-independent churches, which are in full communion with each other which means that they consider themselves to be one and the same church. These churches are led by high-ranking bishops, of which the highest-ranking bishops are known as the Patriarchs. The title of Patriarch is special and reserved for a select group of bishops leading the most important Orthodox churches. Today, there are nine Patriarchs which are nominally equal to each other in rank. However, the most prestigious of these Patriarchs are the so-called Ancient Patriarchs, which are the oldest and original ones, established during the rule of Emperor Justinian I in the 6th century. And the most important of these ancient patriarchs is the one residing in Constantinople, modern-day Istanbul. Although it is wrong to equate him with the Pope in the Catholic Church, the Patriarch of Constantinople does have privileges that other patriarchs don't. Most importantly, the right to grant autocephaly to a church, which means the right of a church to self-governance. And historically, this special status has led to the development of a rivalry between the Patriarch of Constantinople and the Patriarch of Moscow. See, Constantinople was once not only the religious center of the Christian and later Orthodox world, but also the political center, as it was the capital of the once powerful Eastern Roman or Byzantine Empire. When the Kievan Rus, the ancestors of the Russians, Ukrainians and Belarusians, converted to Eastern Christianity in the late 9th century, their religious institutions and bishops were under the jurisdiction of the Patriarch of Constantinople. But over time, the Byzantine Empire declined and so did the influence and power of the Patriarch of Constantinople. The end of the Byzantine Empire finally came in 1453, when the Ottomans took the city under Mehmed II. Although now within an Islamic Empire, the Patriarch of Constantinople endured as an institution and was integrated into the Ottoman government, although stripped of most of its worldly power. The Rus state centered around Kiev also declined and collapsed, but eventually one of its successor states, the Grand Duchy of Moscow, would go on to thrive and unite most of the other Russian principalities into the Tsardom of Russia. After the fall of Constantinople, the Orthodox Church in Russia would become de facto independent from the Patriarch of Constantinople, who still claimed jurisdiction over Russia. But as Russia grew stronger, he eventually conceded and in 1589 he recognized the autocephaly of the Russian Church, even elevating the leading bishop of the Russian Church to the status of Patriarch. The Russian Patriarchate was then granted jurisdiction over the entirety of the Russian Tsardom which at the time also included the northeastern part of what is today Ukraine. However, most of the rest of Ukraine was part of the Catholic Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, including the important city of Kiev, in which the Patriarch of Constantinople was still responsible for matters of the Orthodox Church. But history would not be kind to the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, and eventually the entirety of Ukraine would become part of the Russian Empire, which brought the two patriarchates into direct conflict over Ukraine. While there were some compromises made, the issue remained largely unresolved, while de facto the Russian Orthodox Church would end up holding most of the power over the religious institutions in Ukraine. This conflict would lose its significance after the communist revolution in Russia, but would flare up again 
after the collapse of the Soviet Union and the end of the suppression and persecution of religion. Shortly after Ukraine's independence, two Ukrainian Orthodox churches formed which claimed to be independent from Moscow, however, they lacked the recognition of any of the other recognized Orthodox churches. Nonetheless, with the start of the Ukraine crisis in 2014, interest in having an independent and recognized Orthodox Church in Ukraine grew considerably, and in 2018, the two unrecognized churches were merged and the resulting new church was granted autocephaly by the Patriarch of Constantinople, which made it an official recognized Orthodox Church, at least in his eyes. This event was hailed by the then President of Ukraine, Petro Poroshenko, as a significant victory for the independence of his country, while Russian President Vladimir Putin condemned the act as an attempt to split the Orthodox Church. No matter how one views this event, it had several immediate effects. Firstly, it led to an internal church split, a so-called schism, between the Russian Orthodox Church and all the other churches which recognized the newly independent Ukrainian Church which thus far are the ones of Constantinople, Alexandria and Greece. In practice, this means that, for instance, members of the Russian Orthodox Church are not supposed to attend church when they are in Greece. This split, however, is only partial, as all other Orthodox churches still consider themselves in communion with both sides. Secondly, it created two competing Orthodox churches in Ukraine. One is the aforementioned Orthodox Church of Ukraine, which has only limited recognition. And the other one is the Russian Orthodox Church, which still controls many of the most important churches in Ukraine. This might seem like a meaningless religious issue, but it has a significant impact on the conflict in Ukraine and beyond. Religion still plays a major role in Russian and Ukrainian society. It forges communities, shapes the culture, but also influences people's political opinions. And that is why the allegiance of the Orthodox Church plays a big role, especially regarding the question of Ukrainian identity, which splits the people in Ukraine into two basic camps. The first one, let's call it the pro-Russian camp, sees Ukraine and its people as part of a wider Russian and Eastern Slavic cultural sphere, which is based on the shared belief in Orthodox Christianity and the ancestry from the Kievan Rus. After all, Russia simply means land of the Rus. For this camp, having one single united Orthodox Church in Russia and Ukraine is essential. The second camp, let's call it the anti-Russian one, views the identity of the Ukrainians as related yet distinct from the Russian identity. For them, Ukraine has its own distinct history separate from Russia until the 17th century. Having an independent Orthodox Church is an effective way for this camp to strengthen their viewpoint. Currently, the conflict has split Ukraine's religious community in half, with about 45% of Orthodox Ukrainians having joined the newly formed Ukrainian Church, while the rest remains in the Russian Orthodox Church. It is a contentious issue, which has split communities and threatens to intensify the ethnic tensions in Ukraine. Nonetheless, the schism between Moscow and Constantinople has an impact outside of Ukraine and Russia. One reason why many Orthodox churches have refrained from recognizing the Ukrainian Orthodox Church is the issue of potential church separatism fueled by nationalism. The desire to have separate churches for each country is called philotism, meaning tribalism in Greek, and has been condemned by all Orthodox churches as a heresy or wrong teaching. Nonetheless, there are an increasing number of unrecognized Orthodox churches across Eastern Europe like for instance in Abkhazia and Montenegro. The recognition of the Ukrainian Orthodox independence by the Patriarch of Constantinople sparks concerns that in the future he might opt to recognize even more national and regional Orthodox churches to the detriment of the already established ones. Furthermore, the schism also threatens to truly split the Orthodox Church into two. Schisms within the Orthodox Church are not that unusual and have occurred in the past most recently in 1996. This three-month schism occurred also between the patriarchs of Moscow and Constantinople, that time over the question of jurisdiction over Estonia. However, the current schism seems to be more severe as there is much more at stake. If this is left unresolved, future patriarchs may take an even more hardline stance towards each other, possibly forcing the remaining Orthodox churches to take sides. 
which may then lead to a true and serious schism in the Orthodox world with unforeseen consequences for the societal and political stability of the region. Well, I hope this video helped to shed some light on this important yet often overlooked and misunderstood issue. Thanks for watching and if you like my content, consider subscribing to my channel. I see you in the next one. Bye.